Pursuit of profit, otherwise known as the old grind, the old rat race, chasing the buck, or what have you. Looks familiar, doesn't it? It gives you a jolt sometimes when it hits you that everything you do or don't do in this business directly affects profits. Of course, not everyone sees it just that way. Now, you take our friend Arthur over there, grocery department manager. You know who he really is? He's you. He's everybody in this business. Arthur is a very complex character. Aren't you, Arthur? Look, I hate to mention that we have a rule around here that Hey, you with the store? Do I know you? No. Nope. But I know you, Arthur. I know you to a T. Let's see now. You're smart, alert, courteous, helpful, industrious, and ambitious. Oh, thanks. Now I know you're not with the store. And you're interested in how the store makes out, right? Well, sure. I suppose so. But being human, you can also be thoughtless, and sometimes it'll... But, well, we all have our bad days, don't we? Say, are you a new supervisor or something? Nope. 
Well, if the manager comes back here and finds me yapping with him... If the manager comes back, I'll simply do this. It's just one of those days, that's all, Arthur. Huh? One of those magic days when certain questions that you've been carrying around with you for a long time suddenly come out in the open and <laughs> strange things happen. I've been watching you for some time, Arthur. You've been snooping on me. You mean that griping you've been doing? Forget it. We all grumble now and then. We all want more than we're getting, and that's good. That's what makes business. That's what helps build profits. The trouble is, Arthur, you as one guy don't see how important you are to building those profits. Do you? You'd sure be interested in knowing, though, wouldn't you? Oh, well, sure. Well, we all would. Good. Come with me. Arthur? Take a look around you. An American institution at work. Sure, it's just a store. It's familiar to you as an old pair of shoes. What's so different about it? The fact that down the street, there's another one just like it. Or almost. The fact that she thinks just as highly of several stores in the neighborhood as she does of yours. Or, almost. And she can change her mind about that any day of the week. In a word, Arthur, almost. And that's what makes competition. Competition between products on the shelves, between stores in the neighborhood. Everybody trying, and everybody free to try to make himself so good that the other fellow never catches up. Not just as good but better, and still make the profit he needs to stay better, because the other fellow will try to get better, too. Oh, it's a real battle, Arthur. All sides, evenly matched, or almost. It's a tight ball game. It's not the difference between day and night, dog and cat, summer and winter. It's difference by a nose. Difference by a shade better form. It's difference by a fraction of an inch. It's competition, close competition where just a little more effort counts big. You don't have that extra effort, and right away, you're almost. Okay, okay, I know all that. Something bugging you? Yeah. It's this whole business about profits. I mean, what has that got to do with one guy like me? One guy. Arthur, that's where profits start. With one guy. One gal. A lot of guys play football, but it takes only one guy to throw a pass provided a lot of other one guys are tough enough to protect them. There are a lot of guys in a baseball team, but it takes only one guy to hit the grand slammer, provided a lot of other one guys are good enough to get on base ahead of him. A lot of guys and gals working in your store, but one individual can, well, take yourself. You can make the difference between a loss and a profit. Me? Hard for you to see, huh? How about you being the one guy manager for a while? Well, sure, maybe someday, but... Fine, but my time's a little tight. I can't wait till someday. You see, Arthur, I have a date in a half an hour with one of your competitors. Well, then why are you bothering to feed me all this? Spirit of competition, Arthur. Everybody starts even. Now then, the one guy manager. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. You look a little harassed. What's the trouble? Boy, this is a doozy of a job for one guy. Well, maybe I can help. I can sure use it. Ah, your operating statement. Now, what's the problem? Well, it's the same problem that we had yesterday and the day before that. We ought to be doing better. That's a good start. Anything I can't stand is a complacent manager. Let's see now. I'll tell you what. You got your weekly sales figures? Yep. We're doing about uh, $25,000. Sales. 25,000. Now, let's take a look at your profits for the week. What's the merchandise cost? About $20,000. $20,000. The difference is $5,000. That's your gross profit. Right. Not bad. 
But that figure doesn't last very long, does it? Out of it comes things like, well, let's jot them down. First, fixed expenses. Rent, insurance, warehousing costs, depreciation, and so on. And the figure? $1,500 a week. And they stay at that amount even if your sales drop. Those costs are built in. They're a regular part of your everyday operation, as regular as the coffee break. Now, let's look at the variable expenses. Utilities, supplies, salaries, promotion costs, and so forth. Those expenses that change from time to time. They're about $3,000 a week. Here, the biggest single item is you, your salary, and the salaries of all the others in the store. You're quite an investment. These total expenses are 4,500. Take that away from your gross profit of 5,000. Profit before taxes, 500. After taxes, about $250. 1%. I never thought the figure one could be so small. It is small. But 1%, or a little over, is just about the national average for the grocery business. Would you like to increase it? Would I like free tickets to every bowl game of the World Series? Okay. Let's see if there's anything you can do about it. Now, let's break these figures down into percentages of sales. Sales, 100%. Or, for example, $1. Cost of goods, 80%. That's about normal. Fixed expenses are also normal, 6%. But variable expenses, look here. They're taking 12% of the gross sales. That, my friend, is a little higher than the average. And these two cents remaining are profit. 2%. Pay your taxes, half your profit, and you wind up with one cent profit out of every buck. Whatever we sell for a dollar, Arthur, we make one penny. Sales. Variable expenses. They're the only ones that you can control. They're your baby. Just mine? Just one guy's? The two main responsibilities of all the one guys in this store are fast turnover and control of variable expenses. Move the merchandise at the lowest cost. Now, the big question is, Mr. Store Manager, what can you do about it? Got any ideas? You're a darn tootin'. I have some ideas. Increase sales. Cut down shrinkage, damage, and waste. Reduce utilities. Cut down laundry bills. Make those guys more productive. Hooray for our side. How are you going to do it? First thing I'm going to do is wake them up and build a fire under them. Give them... Good. My time is running short. Everybody, front and center. All right, now hear this. I've just been over our operating statement. And if I have a heart attack in the next few minutes, you'll all know why. You think we're running a rest home here? Maybe it'd be better if you would just lie down. Then you wouldn't be breaking things and leaving boxes in the aisles for people to stumble over and alienating customers and running up laundry bills and building displays that tip over and marking merchandise wrong. You can't run a business like a walk in the park. We are going to start working around here from now on, understand? We're going to handle merchandise like it was all eggs. We're going to build better displays. We're going to watch pricing and price tags. And we're going to treat customers like royalty. Sales, they've got to go up. Expenses, they've got to go down. And I mean right now. And don't forget it. Yeah, but... What do you want me to do? You guys know what to do? Use your heads. 
Arthur, just a minute. Aren't you going to tell them? Tell them what? What they can do about it. I don't have to tell them. Listen, I know those guys. Do you? What do you mean, do I? Take another look at them, Arthur. Look at them more closely. What? Look at them. They're all you, Arthur. Well, more to the point, you're all of them. One guy, Arthur. Let's ask him how they feel about your little pep talk. Well? Yeah. get through to them. No. Nope. You know, Arthur, whenever you're in a bind in a well-managed store, the manager usually talks over his problems with an assistant. Everything we do in the store, the items we carry, the displays we build, our housekeeping, our attitude, everything affects our profit because everything is for the customer. We're in a penny business, Art. The profit on every one of those items is figured in pennies. Waste one penny, and you have to sell an extra dollar's worth of merchandise to get it back. And that's a lot of work for just one penny. Sure, one dollar doesn't seem like much. But think of this. Take a couple of thousand customers going to the store two or three times a week. That's about 5,000 transactions punched out on the cash register. If we can boost just one transaction in five by an extra buck, here. That's an extra $1,000 at the checkout stand. Now, the company paid about $800 for the merchandise, leaving $200 gross profit. But there was no increase in the fixed expenses, like rent and insurance. And even if the operating and handling costs remain about the same, let's say $120, the net extra profit is $80, or 8% of the $1,000 before taxes. After taxes, 4% instead of 1%. How do you get that extra dollar? That's where our individual initiative comes in. The building of mass displays tie-in displays of go-together products like cheese and crackers, salad items, a new and different recipe prominently displayed, fresh fruit attractively displayed, items we may be pushing, seasonal items for vacations, Easter, Passover. You get the pitch. Headquarters doesn't limit us to the weekly sales plan. We gotta add ideas of our own. We're the experts in this neighborhood. One new customer doesn't seem like much either. But remember, she represents a family. And one new family can mean an increase in sales of $900 to $1,200 a year. Somebody once figured guys like us make as many as 4,000 separate moves during a normal day. And most of those moves have a definite effect on our efficiency, and therefore the store's profits. Things like correct price marking, so there's no mix-up at checkout, and careful stacking to avoid damage, daily rotation, don't waste linen, keep things off the floors, it looks messy and causes accidents. Sure, they seem like little things, but it's the little things that really make the difference in the store's profit. If we can increase our efficiency 20%, our profit will double. Okay. So it's up to me. Hey! Hey, where are you? Hey, you keep talking profits. 
Some guys act like profit is a dirty word. Profits, my friend, are the money we need to grow on. Nobody stands still these days. If everybody else moves ahead and you just stand still, you're actually falling behind. Just to survive, you gotta grow. And you do it with profits. Only with profits. Yeah, but a guy in my situation... Exactly. In your situation. Profits are what moved you from stock boy to the department head you are right now. Profits expanded the business, created more jobs, let you move up. Profits give you your security, your chance for future advancement. Yes, sir. Profits have a big job to do. Where do they go? As dividends to investors in the business, profits help you get the good things of life that you want. Some must be retained for the company to grow on. One new store means a new manager, a new head cashier, new department heads, and new assistants. Yes, more jobs and more security for more people in a great and growing industry. So that an ambitious guy like you may have a chance to become store manager someday. You really think so? As good a chance as anyone else. Provided you never forget how important you are to the store's success. How important you are to your own success. You, one guy. It's a one guy operation. And I'm the guy. You're the guy. Whatever your job. Well, I have to push off, Arthur. Get another appointment. Now, wait a minute. You're not going to give this advice to all those other guys down the street, are you? Remember, Arthur, competition. They're pursuing profit, too. The mark of a free society. So long, Arthur. And don't forget, they think they're just as good as you are. Almost. <laughs>